urges stakeholders to increase awareness campaign on cervical cancer screening treatment. Government targets, a number of state government targets to transform state to skill acquisition hub of Africa. ECOWAS Parliament calls for strategic cooperation among regional international stakeholders. French Parliament urges European Union to label Russia's mercenary Wagner Force terror group. Before the news in details, the special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Nonye Mokoye. As the first phase of ongoing free cervical cancer screening and treatment program in Anambra State begins to wind down, the governor's wife, Nonye Soludo, has urged more women to come out and take advantage of the exercise. The governor's wife, who stated this in Oka while assessing the exercise so far, said that though an appreciable number of women have shown interest in the ongoing program, she still looks forward to seeing more women and girls take part in it before June 2023 deadline. We have details. While restating how crucial the exercise is to defeating the cervical cancer challenge, Mrs. Soludo explained that the six-month time frame for the current program is long enough to accommodate more women, irrespective of their individual shadows and locations. The governor's wife also commended health workers who are providing the services and urged them to give every woman equal priority and to ensure that those whose results come out positive are well taken care of. She further urged parents to ensure that the girl child in their reproductive age also gets screened, assuring that the designated health facilities for the screening and treatment processes have adequate human and technical experts. Mrs. Soludo also appealed to community and religious leaders, leadership of women groups, as well as other stakeholders to help drive the campaign by creating awareness among women, especially those living in rural areas, to understand the importance of the exercise. Anambra State Ministry of Health, in partnership with the World Health Organization, WHO, and Clinton Access Health Initiative, CHAI, had on December 20, 2022, kicked off free cervical cancer screening and treatment for 5,000 women and girls in the state. The program, which is scheduled to last for six months, in the first badge, we continue in subsequent phases, but to be enjoyed only by women who are registered with the Anambra State Health Insurance Scheme. 25 health facilities have also been selected for the exercise, with plans to increase the number in due course. They include Chukwemeka Odumogwe Juku University Teaching Hospital, Oka, General Hospital, Enuguku, General Hospital, Umueri, General Hospital, Ekulobia, Primary Health Center, Ozarai Suofia, Primary Health Center Nkwere Omonachi. Others are Primary Health Center Enugotu, Primary Health Center Akweze, Primary Health Center Eziani, Primary Health Center Atani 1, Primary Health Center Atani 2, Primary Health Center Nofia, Matana and Child Health Center Amobia, Child Health Center Atani, Matana and Primary Health Center Mbono. Other health facilities are Okofa Primary Health Center Umemenike Hospital. CRRHC Neni, Enugu Aguleri Primary Health Center, Obu Umueri Primary Health Center, Nagaba Primary Health Center, Umunachi, General Hospital, Nanka, Primary Health Center, Nanka 1, Primary Health Center, Umueze Isuofia, and Aguata Primary Health Center. The Anambra State Commissioner for Youth uh, Development, Mr. Patrick Agamba, has said that the present administration wants to make the state the skill hub of Africa. Mr. Agamba stated this during a statewide monitoring and inspection of training centers and entrepreneurship development institutes for the One Youth Two Skills Project. Our correspondent, Blessing Uchendo, reports. 
In local government areas visited include Oka South, Anocha, Aguata, Orumba North and South, while the centers visited in the various local government areas include Unizik Business School, Industrial Training Fund, IDK, Neni, Oko and Ibuhu. Addressing the trainees at each of the centers visited, the commissioner explained that the inspection was to ensure effective policy and program implementation, adding that after the training, participants would be exposed to the business aspects of the skills they must have acquired. He emphasized that Governor Chukuma's Soludo administration is desirous of creating 130,000 private sector jobs and raise 1,000 youth millionaires annually. The the commissioner commended the master trainers and facilitators as well as desk officers in local government areas for helping to drive the community-based initiative modeled after Igbo apprenticeship system and called on all young people resident in Anambra who desire to build honest and value-driven enterprise to take advantage of the scheme. So I thank Mr. Governor immensely for this decision looking at the future of the state. Of course, we can see that the future is bright. This one you two skills is a total package, empowerment package. You know, from the vocational and technical stage training to entrepreneurship training. From there, we take you guys to uh, a cooperative, you know, setting. Comparative in their various remarks, the Anambra State Chairman of National Youth Council of Nigeria, Surveyor Obiemeka Chukode, the Anambra State Chairman of Anambra State Association of Town Unions, Asatu Youth Wing, Comrade Ken Okoli, and the leader of Hanezendibo Youth Wing, Anambra State, Comrade Onyedika Ewe, said that one youth two skills entrepreneurship scheme is laudable and timely and urged the trainees to key into the initiative in order to become self-reliant. So today we've been up to five local governments and the training is going very, very well. We want to appreciate the Mr. Governor for this wonderful initiative to ensuring that the youth of Ndanambara is engaged, is uh, empowered through skill acquisition. Uh, the program is a well packaged program, full pack. Some of the trainees, including Ugon Nawobi, Fever Wafo, Kinsley Ezewaka, Triodo Oparugo, and Mesoma Akana, expressed gratitude to the state government, noting that the training has rekindled their hope for a better future, even as they commended the quality of training they are receiving in the centers. Heading for a great Anambra, whereby every youth will be inclusive, even in the government, and also to testify tomorrow. We pray that even as they are doing this, they should, that God should give them more strength and more wisdom to continue in their great work. Blessing Uchendo, ABS News. The Nigeria Red Cross Society has called on world leaders and global organizations to embark on rapid response to disaster emergencies and funding of humanitarian operations. Paul Ezoke reports. Speaking at a ceremony to mark the 2023 World Red Cross Day at the state headquarters of the organization at Amorbia, Oka South Council area, the state chairman of the Nigerian Red Cross Society, Professor Peter Kachi, said this will help create an enabling environment in order to achieve global security and safety, which he noted are central to world economic and social order to accelerate global growth in all facets of human endeavors. Professor Kachi explained that the day is celebrated to provide relief and peace to the injured people to prevent death and help people living in vulnerable areas to manage public health emergencies as well as empower its members, civil societies and other involved local communities to provide immediate responses to health disaster. He urged youth groups to volunteer to humanitarian activities and relief projects to help victims of disaster and violent conflicts and called on the federal government to establish federal ministry of national reconciliation to reconcile the entire Nigerians and the enhance peaceful coexistence, enthrone national rebirth, and promote sense of value and patriotism. As Red Cross advocates law for humanity, it is pertinent to encourage youth groups to volunteer in humanitarian activities, relief projects, 
to have victims of disaster. In his remarks, the line member of the organization and former chief judge of Anambra State, Justice Paul Obidiwe, said Anambra State Red Cross has remained alive to its responsibilities as first responder to emergencies, has continued to give succor to vulnerable members of the society in line with the basic principles of the organization. Red Cross is seen as just as an organization, ordinary organization or society like others. Particularly, Anambra is a typical, practical example of what Red Cross ought to be. But for Red Cross, we are ever ready, particularly these events that we know that happens yearly. Fielding questions from journalists, the State Secretary of the organization, Engineer Kinsley Okoye, said the Nigerian Red Cross Society has the needed structures across the state for prompt response to emergencies and the putting necessary measures in place for interventions in the predicted flooding and called for more funding to further increase their visibility in the state. Red Cross is in every, every location. Say your location in Anambra will have structure there. Red Cross Anambra is the only, only branch in the Tasevun state that can boast of having location not only in all the local government but even in all the communities. One or two Red Cross members is there. From Amobia in Oka South Council area, Paul is okay, ABS News. Operatives of the Anambra State Police Command has killed two suspected armed robbers at Mbo Idemele North Council area. A release signed by the police public relations officer in Anambra State, Mr. Tochuku Ikinga, said the suspects were killed during a gun duel with the criminals while two others escape and efforts are already on to arrest other fleeing gang members. He explained that following series of credible information to the police command from the residents of Anambra State, many joint operations are currently ongoing with the security forces, especially the vigilantes, aimed at sustaining and enhancing safety across the state. The joint operations, he said, yielded positive development as the operatives, while on routine patrol along Omosiome Mbo, Midemli North local government area, intercepted the gang of four operating in an unregistered black lizard. SUV recovered two locally made explosives, one AK-47 rifle, nine life 7.62 ammunition, four AK-47 magazines, charms, and other incriminating items. The release disclosed that earlier on the same date, police operatives at Azobunike in Oyi local government area arrested another gang member and vandals in the act of vandalizing a truck suspected to have been stolen. He said the suspects are one Musulo Fidelis, aged 51, Ilue Bunam Amobi, aged 44, Solomon Abago, aged 51, and Chidi Ebere, innocent, aged 28. According to the release, they all confessed to the crime and they are currently helping the police with information on other syndicate members that disposes innocent drivers of their truck before bringing them to their criminal hideout at Azobunike. Away now from state stories, the session provides a platform to deliberate and strengthen the parliament's position on issues of regional and continental importance. A Princess Equi Ajideva Abuja Biru has details of this report. This session aims to strengthen coordination between ECOWAS Commission and other organs of ECOWAS, consider referrals and if need be, invite appropriate authorities to address concerns of the parliament on issues referred to them. In his opening speech, the speaker ECOWAS Parliament, Dr. Sidi Tunis, said the ECOWAS Parliament believes that its success as a regional body is hinged on effective cooperation with national, regional and international bodies, hence it has taken up the responsibility to facilitate strategic cooperations with like bodies of shared interests and values. He promised that the ECOWAS Parliament will continue to demonstrate commitment to issues relating to women in the sub-region. The allocation of funding to the ECOWAS Parliament, Female Parliamentary Association, ECOFEPA, to fully support its programs is a demonstration of this commitment. I must commend the leadership and members of ECOFEPA 
for being robust, committed, and dedicated to championing women issues. The president of the ECOWAS Commission, Omar Torre, in his speech, said the sessions offer an opportunity for self-reflection, mutual learning, and vigilance over the affairs of the community. He lamented that the meeting is taking place in a context characterized by upheavals in the international environment, while the situation in the region remains worrisome, but added that they are deploying all resources to ensure stability, security, and resilience in member states to ensure the promotion and implementation of the Commission's goals at the level of member states within the framework of Vision 2050. We are seriously concerned about the security situation prevailing in our region, with the persistence and the resurgence of terrorist acts in Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and northern Nigeria. These acts have taken the form of attacks against both military personnel and civilians, resulting in numerous casualties, material damage and displacement. In his solidarity speech to the session, the president of the Community Court of Justice ECOWAS, Justice Edward Asante, encouraged the parliamentarians to utilize the opportunity afforded by their tenure to contribute towards the strengthening of the ECOWAS edifice for the realization of the objectives of the community through the exercise of the mandate of the parliament. The president of Nigeria Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawan, in his message, urged them to play their roles as lawmakers and utilize their coming together as participants to exert the needed change in their communities. It is tried to argue that we are more in touch with a wider scope of citizens, especially those at the grassroots. This puts us in the vantage position of reflecting realities as they affect the mass of our people. In Abuja, Princess Ewe Ajide reporting. On business news, the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the Master Dr. Bashir Jamo, has urged Nigerians in the diaspora to invest in the country's maritime sector. Dr. Jamo made a call in Abuja during the closing ceremony of the Global African Diaspora Symposium, themed Building Stronger Connections Between Africa and the Global Diaspora. Dr. Jamo, who was represented by the event by the Director of Special Duties of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Mr. Isiche Osangbe, described the maritime sector as key to economic growth of any nation. Earlier, the Director General of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission organizers of the symposium, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Erewa, expressed appreciation to Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency for its support of the program and urged participants interested in the maritime industry to reach out to the agency for clarity. On the foreign scene, the French Parliament has adopted a resolution calling on the European Union to formally label Russia's mercenary Wagner Force, a terror group, as reports emerged that the United Kingdom also appears poised to designate the group a terror organization. The resolution, which is non-binding and largely symbolic, passed France, uh, France's Parliament with unanimous support across the political spectrum. Wagner fighters are not simple mercenaries driven by an appetite for money, but they follow a broad strategy from Mali to Ukraine of supporting the aggressive policies of President Putin's regime towards their democracies, he added. Authorities in France have also blamed the group for running anti-French propaganda operations in West Africa, particularly Mali. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky praised the French Parliament in a video message and urged other countries to follow France's example. On Sport News, Nigeria Premier Football League and PFL stakeholders and followers have been promised season-ending matches that will consolidate on the gains made so far by the reforms 
instituted by the Interim Management Committee. The IMC was mandated at inauguration to ensure a cleanup of the NPFL and make it competitive, attractive to corporate support and aligned to the international football calendar. Head of operations at the IMC, Davidson Owumi, spoke during an internal review session and said that part of plans in place to achieve a season that ends on a high is the setting up of an intensive monitoring team that would be at all the venues. Against the background of possible compromise of games, he said the IMC is not leaving anything to chance. Hence, it is working with relevant match security agencies, the club administrators, the Nigeria referees and the NFF. And that sport news concludes our news this morning. But just remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS or any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television or CAR. On Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. On the main news again, wife of Anambra State Governor Mrs. Soludo has urged stakeholders to increase awareness campaign on cervical cancer screening treatment program. Anambra State Government is targeting to transform state to skill acquisition hub of Africa. ECOWAS Parliament has called for strategic cooperation among regional international stakeholders. And from the foreign scene, French Parliament has urged European Union to label Russia's mercenary Wagner Force terror group. Governor Chuko Masoludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonya Mokoye. Good morning and enjoy a beautiful Thursday.